Hey yo everybody, Haku here with my video of my top favorite waifus slash characters from Mayo Shoujo Weeks A Kaku or Magical Girl Raising Project. Now I say character slash waifu because with this series they kind of go hand in hand for me. The characters that I liked more since there are really only these 16 characters. Uh, the characters and waifu, the, the two terms kind of intermingle here quite a bit. Um, and I'm doing top 15 because I'm counting the Peaky Angels, Minael, and Unile as one unit just to make things easier, make it a nice even 15, and because the two of them aren't really that distinguishable from one another or anything, uh, not significantly for me. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, go through these, and I would say there are probably three of the 15 I do not like. <laughs> there are uh, characters that I don't like, that I don't find waifu whatsoever, Two that, while they're okay, they're just kind of boring, just kind of meh, no big deal. And then all of the top ten I absolutely love. Any of the top ten could be waifu for waifu best girl. Um, so, uh, yep, that is, that is it. And uh, let's go ahead and get into number 15. Number 15, the worst girl, is Calamity Mary. Now, the reason I put Calamity Mary in last place is because her personality is terrible. She freaking abused children. That is something that you do not really uh, come back from very much as a character, as a person. So abusing children, big no-no. Killing a bunch of innocent people, also very, very much a huge bad thing. So um, a lot of bad stuff under Calamity Mary's belt. And in addition to all of that, while she may be cute, either one of her forms, neither one are cute enough to make up for the terrible, terrible things that she has done. So overall, there are some people in the series that have done some pretty crappy things, but for me, Calamity Mary is the most hateable and dislikable to me personally. Number 14 on the list is the shared spot of Minael and Unael, the Peaky Angels. Now, um, they're at 14th because they are the sort of even in their real-life counterparts, they're sort of a benign, sort of annoying and douchebag where they're just like the type of people that gossip and bicker with people and are just really rude and self-centered. But then you put them, take them out of a normal life situation and put them into the situation of a survival game and they are selfish enough to do really dick things to innocent people for their own gain, like killing them, which is even worse by quite a stretch. So um, for me, Minael and Unile, because of this, they get knocked down to a 14th place, but aren't as bad as Calamity Mary. Number 13 and last of the three characters I dislike was Swim Swim. Now Swim Swim did a bunch of really evil things, and her actual physical style and appearance is not that cute to me. Personality was pretty cute, in a way. Um, the whole sort of, I don't know, the monotonous, cold sort of type I'm okay with, but gosh, she did some terrible, terrible things that, again, like Calamity Mary, aren't really things you can come back from. Like killing kids and killing pregnant women, you can't come back from the stuff Swim Swim did. And the reason I think that she isn't as bad as Calamity, Calamity Mary to me is she at least has a little bit of excuse, or an excuse. Um, I would say that being a little kid and having her warped little kid sense of morality, um, it gives her a little bit of an excuse, not enough to make her not a horrible, horrible person, but it gives her enough of an excuse to make her not as bad as Calamity Mary, who say, um, did all this terrible stuff, or tried to do all this terrible stuff, and yet was old enough and mature enough to know exactly what she was doing was bad, but did it anyway. Um, so Swim Swim, still a jerk, still not that uh, into her, but um, she's not as bad as uh, the other three, I guess, that were on the list before her. My 12th favorite uh, character slash waifu from uh, Shoujo Ikseki Kaku, and the first of the two that I just find pretty boring is Lapiselle. And the reason I would say that I don't dislike her but I find her boring is just because compared to all of the other characters, her power to me is kind of the most boring. Her appearance is not, uh, is not totally the most boring, but her appearance isn't that great. 
and her actual story and personality is one million percent the most boring to me. Her actual story was the dullest to me. She had the generic uh, childhood friend and generic mentor that was destined to die sort of uh, cliches going. And the series didn't do too much with cliches, but uh, when it came to La Pucelle, she had them. Um, so overall, she wasn't she just wasn't very exciting. Uh, also, she's a guy in real life, so that's pretty. Uh, uh, not the not the not the uh, thing that makes me that interested in her. So um, yeah, she would be number twelve. Not directly evil, or not ones that I directly dislike like the other three, but she's just kind of boring. Number eleven for me is Sister Nana. Now Nana is really really cute and uh, I, I like that she's so happy and positive most of the time but the thing with sister nana is like la pucelle um she's just pretty boring i don't dislike her in any way but i don't particularly like her all that much either she was just kind of in the story she didn't play a massive massive role other than bringing weiss into it more often and sort of connecting a couple characters here and there but she just wasn't a very exciting character for me um, this is a bit dull. Um, and that's, yeah, I guess really all I can think of to say about Sister Nana. At number 10, getting into the characters that I actually did really, really like is Top Speed. Now, Top Speed's really, really cute. I love the witch design in her magical girl form. Um, her real life form wasn't that cute to me. She was a pregnant housewife that was once a, um, was once a sort of biker delinquent. But uh, I, I thought she was really cute. I love the voice actress. Um, I love the hairstyle and the magical form. I love, like I said, the witch uh, setup. But um, uh, she just, while I really, really loved her, there were just nine that when I compare them side by side, I like more. So uh, for me, top speed is in 10th place. In ninth place is Magicaloid 44. Now Magicaloid 44, for me, her robot form is meh, whatever, but I loved her human form. I loved the story of her human form as well. Um, the only thing with Magicaloid is uh, her personality. She's a little bit of a bad guy, but even though she's a little bit of a bad guy, she still is understandable. I feel like the bad things she's done and the bad things about her personality were understandable. I could see where she was coming from and what she was doing and at the end of the day she really didn't do anything as terrible as say Swim Swim or Minael slash Unael or um, uh, even Cranberry. She didn't really do anything as bad as Cranberry did. Um, so yeah, she didn't really do anything that bad even though she had kind of a bad personality and even then it was one that I understood. So um, ninth place, Magicaloid 44. My eighth top waifu from my Osho Juikse Hiekaku is Ruler, and Ruler is one for me that I really came to love uh, as I kept watching the show and just got to know other characters and everything more. I really came to love Ruler. Um, I just think that her sort of uh, narcissism and impotent rage is just freaking adorable. Um, she's just... Her human form and magical form are both very, very cute and physically attractive. I like them both. And uh, for me, she has really nice legs, of course, and a really cute face, so I, I just really ended up... Uh, I didn't like her at first, and I didn't think I would really like her, but uh, over time, I ended up really liking Ruler's character. Seventh place for me is the Never Miss Ninja Waifu Ripple, and Ripple for me, she had a really deep, tragic story, and a really... A personality that's very easy to sympathize with and I think it's very easy for most people to really sympathize with Ripple's personality and her story and what she had to go through. I said from the beginning I thought she was going to be the last one standing if there was one left standing so I really like that she made it through. Um, I just really really enjoy the character. One of my favorite characters and definitely seventh favorite wife who of course about midway I guess that would put her. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it, and when it comes to physical appearance, her magical form is okay. Her human form, I thought she was pretty cute. Uh, but mostly, even though the physical appearance is whatever, I really, really loved Ripple's personality. So um, yeah, number seven is Ripple. 
my sixth favorite character and also waifu slash waifu is Snow White. Now Snow White's sort of our um, would-be protagonist kind of. There's not a real firm protagonist because we flip back and forth through all the character stories but uh, Snow White certainly had a lot of focus on her and I thought her character was a little bit boring, a little bit generic at first and throughout most of the show even but then the last episode made me love the character so so much. The last episode episode really really brought her character deeper into my heart. Um, I do think both her magical girl form and her human form are cute. I really like her personality after the uh, after the last episode. I think the, just the shift and how cool she became. She just became such an awesome character. So I really really love Snow White and she didn't quite make it into the top five but uh, she was still a very, very good character. And now getting into the top five, my fifth favorite anime waifu from Mao Shoujo Weeks Kaku was Hardcore Alice. Now, the reason I chose Alice for this is not just her physical appearance. I thought her personality was super, super cute. Her physical appearance was pretty cute as well, but her story to me was possibly the most interesting. Uh, it was certainly up there within the top two or three. I love her story. Um, if anything, I think that out of all of the characters, there were only a few that I was like, ah, maybe they should have died sooner, or maybe they should have died later so we got more of their story. Horde Gorales is definitely one of those that I would have liked to see her live a little bit longer, just to see a little bit more of what her character could have done story-wise. So um, she's one of those, the only characters where I'm like, okay, she should have lived a little bit longer. So um, yeah, I really, really like Hardcore Alice. And um, that's why she made it in the top five of uh, my waifus list. My fourth favorite waifu from my Ojojo Kekaku is Tama. And Tama, I would protect the hell out of her. I mean, look how freaking cute she is. She is too cute, too pure, too innocent, too perfect for this world. Tama was so, so adorable. The only thing with me is from the very beginning, I said I was expecting her to die. And so the very beginning, I sort of, um, I kept myself from getting too attached to Tama because I was like, she is definitely, definitely dying. But when it comes to just being the cutest, best thing in the world, Tama is like just so, so adorable. Number three in the top waifu list is Weiss Winter Prison, the waifu who could never love me anyway because she's not even into guys that we know of. But um, for me, I think that her human form was definitely the most sexy. I just, I thought Shizuku was really, really good looking. I thought she had a really great personality and was a really understandable character and a character like Ripple that you could really sympathize with. I was expecting her to live a little bit longer. I think that maybe it would have been better for the story if maybe she lived a little bit longer but uh either way i really really love weiss winter prison um she just couldn't quite make it into the top two but uh gosh her i, I think maybe a reason for that is um her magical form i'm not that huge a fan of uh she's really cute and i really love her powers but uh, i i liked her human form a lot more so uh, either way, Shizuku or Wife Winter Prison is my third favorite waifu. I know guys, I know, number two is a massive, massive shock, but uh, Nemorine is actually only second place for me. She was perfect in every way, so cute, so pure, the most perfect character she could have been. I loved Nemorine, even in the only, what, two episodes we got to know her, she is probably... Ah, I, I struggle to say that she's my favorite character out of all of them, but she might just be. But she's definitely up there. So, number two waifu, because the, her four, both of her forms are perfect physically and personality-wise. There is nothing they could have done to make Nemorine even better than she already is. Even with two episodes, she didn't need to survive the whole series to make me, and it seems most fans love her more than just about every other character. So I really, really love Nemorine, and uh, that's why she's at uh, number two. I thought she was going to be at number one, honestly. I thought she was destined to top this list, but uh, nope. Going through all the characters, she ended up at number two. And now my top 
favorite waifu from Mao Shoujo Weeks AK Kaku was the musician of the forest, Cranberry or Clamberry, depending on your translation. And Cranberry for me is just so sexy and mysterious. She is the best physically looking to me. I really loved her voice. I loved the character so much. And the mystery is a big part of it. I really want to know more about her. I want to know about her human form. I want to know everything about Cranberry right now. Um, she's just such an awesome character. Probably my favorite character overall. She did a lot more good guy stuff than almost all of the good guys, even though she was the one that uh, got us all in this mess, kind of. Uh, even though Fob was kind of manipulating her. But Cranberry was just so freaking cool. And I gotta say, I don't think I've ever been as attracted to a girl as when she was beating Lapiselle's face in. So, um, man, just Cranberry was so freaking good looking. And, again, the personality as well. I loved Cranberry. Her story as well, when it comes down to it, if I was to name who I thought my favorite stories were, I would be like, off the top of my head, Nemarine. It ended really, really soon, but I think that was good for the character. Hard Goralis, but I think hers ended a little bit soon as well. And Cranberry, and there's not really much I would change about Cranberry's story, except I wish we learned more about her past, which doesn't even really have to do with her direct involvement in the story. So Cranberry, my favorite story, my favorite character, and appearance-wise, top waifu. Uh, well, I guess it all sort of leads together into being top waifu. So, best girl is Cranberry, for those of you that were wondering. And I have seen a lot of you guys throughout this season telling me who you thought your best girls were. So, um, go ahead and uh, like if you liked the video and comment down there to tell me who your favorites were. What your list would be, who your top best girl waifu is. And uh, all of that, subscribe for more Mayo Show Dubix, Kaku, and more. And follow on Twitter, and I'll try to keep you updated there on things for the channel. And that is it. So thank you once again for watching. I hope you enjoyed, uh, and I'll see you all next time.